Hey folks, Lester and Jamie here. Uh, welcome back. Uh, I guess uh, Deanna, Deanna, Deanna Denmark, who's in Denmark. That's pretty creative. Pretty awesome. Uh, says, welcome back. It's almost time for bed here in Denmark. I it's feel like almost it's almost time, time for, for bed. bed here. Yeah, <laughs> it's only uh, three in the afternoon, three in the afternoon. Uh, and uh, listen, it's time for bed here because it's been an exhausting weekend, but we're very blessed, man. We're so blessed. We're just getting back a couple of hours ago here to I'm a Survivor after a really fun, fun weekend that we had hanging out with some really good people in Oklahoma. And uh, I'll tell you what, traveling is tough. And Jamie and I, as you guys know, we've talked about it a little bit. We were invited to be presenters at a um, creator, a video creators. They called that. What was the title of that thing? United? Video Creators United. Yeah, VCU, Video Creators United, which is something that uh, Sean from Keeping It Dutch, along with Daniel from Our Family Homestead, kind of got together. And they, they've been to these things around the country a few times and so they kind of thought about a little bit and how could we find one to, for creators that are small creators that are wanting to expand and grow their platform you know grow on their platforms and so we were blessed that they that they invited us you know you guys already know this but i thought it was kind of a secret that jamie's the brains behind this operation i thought i thought i didn't know you guys all knew that but supposedly Daniel calls it out that we're going to invite Jamie to talk because she is the brains behind I'm a survivor. It's true. No, they invited Lester to talk because he's the world's best storyteller. Let's so I'm, I'm not the world's best storyteller. My dad is a lot better storyteller than I am. Well, you get but it. I, I, so I, my dad can tell stories. But I create stories. Mm. That's the difference. My dad, if you know my dad, uh, Paul Paul, hanging with Paul Paul, my dad can tell stories. And he can take a pretty mundane, kind of boring story, and he can make it a whopper, as the old folks say. The, the boomers, he can make it a whopper. <laughs> and so my dad can tell some whoppers. And if you guys follow my dad, you know that every morning he'll get on that side by side, he'll put that dog there beside him oh Heidi and he'll go off and he'll tell some whoppers of the old days of the old times and uh, my gift from that is that I have learned to create some stories using the babies here on the farm and I guess Daniel likes them stories <laughs> I guess Daniel likes my stories I the, never thought of it that way that Daniel likes story time but Daniel so. must like story time. Well, he did admit he and DJ said that they have they watch very little TV. They spend most of their their nights there right before bed watching YouTube videos. And so I guess in a way I might be telling Daniel and DJ their bedtime stories. If you think about it, who's to say what they watch right as they doze off and fall asleep? But it might be them having dreams of Pig Trudy rolling around in her hot dog or whatever she's eating that day or carl going out for a run with his with his little munchkins teaching them the beauty of flight school with your geese who knows what daniel and dj are watching but nonetheless we were invited to present um we were invited and you can jump anytime we were invited to present separately me on the art of storytelling and Jamie on the differences between the social media platforms because they are in fact very different. Very I'm gonna have to stop talking because everyone is saying, Lester, let Jamie talk. And she's free to talk, Jamie. You guys know there's a lot of women that might kind of sit in the back behind their husbands. Jamie does not take a back seat to me ever. <laughs> And if you think that she needs an invite to talk, you're wrong. She I'll will jump, jump in. in whenever she's ready. I also have this power tool right here where I can be like, <laughs> just let me speak. Or I can grab his leg. She does that. What was funny is I made a little reel of you. You probably don't even know this exists yet. I made a reel yesterday when you're getting ready to talk and you're doing the mic testing or whatever. Yeah. And the sound guy 
uh, Ron. cameraman Ron, he was like, Jamie, Jamie, I got a tool for you. And I'm like, oh, great. Thinking to myself, like, oh, I'm, I have a clicker or something because I'm, you know, I'm pushing the slides. No, he showed me the mute button. To shut me up. Just in case you went over your time. Just in case. That was all it was for. It was not meant to be mean. So many people in the comments on that reel took it as like, Jamie, you could never, That was that's the meanest thing you've ever said to Lester about Lester. And it's the meanest Just... thing you've ever said. And the world would be a horrible place. And I, I went back and I was like, oh my, I didn't mean it like that. It was a joke of like, you know, because he, he tends to ramble a little bit. So sometimes, or he says things that are like, you can't say that here. That was it. That was the funny part. Now, if I'm not mistaken, we, I, I feel like Jamie's presentation was point on. She says that mine was pretty good as it well. So, but the funny thing, if you think about it, there were only two presenters out of the whole lineup who went over their allotted time. There were two <laughs> presenters. Now, listen to me. Let's see if y'all can figure out which two people went over. They we were we were allotted 45 minutes plus a 15 minute window for questions, and two people only, went over only, the whole hour yeah only two presenters went way over their allotted time who do y'all think those two presenters were i'm looking for people who think they know which two presenters would have been the ones to go over their allotted time the presenters that you so okay here we go jason and jamie okay uh daniel and lester okay uh someone's saying for sure you lester <laughs> Uh, someone says, duh, we know it was you, Lester. So here, here we go, Lester, Daniel, and Jason. So, okay, so you all know that for the most part, Lester was one of those presenters who went over his allotted time. He was the one that Sean, who was uh, leading the thing, had to be doing this to. Right. Walking around doing this. How hard is it for me to be trying to stay engaged and focused? He and, didn't do it till the past time. And so then he, then he made Jamie start doing it. So now I'm. Oh no, I didn't do this. I went. Uh, you're ten minutes over. I'm trying to have an effective, you know, get these guys off on a right foot and help them make their way. And I have these two over here, Sean Dutch, Dutch, and Jamie over there. Ahem, ahem. But here's the thing. There was no point where you actually got sidetracked, which I was really impressed with because we all know Lester has a few squirrel moments. But you were on track with your speech the entire time. People were asking questions and that sort of prolonged your talk outside. If we would have removed all of the questions that happened, sort of like interjected in there. Yeah. Your timing would have actually been on point. Like I, I, I don't mean that in a joking way or anything else like you answered and, and kept the thing going with the exception of one time when I was like, actually, we'll save those questions until later, you know, because it wasn't relevant to your talk. Right. But for the most part, you never got off track. And I was so, so impressed. Wow. And that doesn't happen very often. But uh, the other presenter who also went over their time, who had Sean pointing at his clock, and then finally I had to say, Ahem, would have been that one right there. <laughs> So if we are not what they say, two peas in a pod, have you ever heard that expression? Have you ever heard that expression? Yeah. When you guys did that clip with Jason live, Lester talked the whole time. Jason said two words. Is that true? It's only like a minute live. Come on. Hmm. That's sad. That's kind of sad. I didn't even realize that. Um, the I'm having to do a couple of things over here on the side. Um, oh. It was only like a minute long and it was in between sessions. So it wasn't, it wasn't like, I know what we deal. can do. We can actually give Jason a chance to talk for himself now. Oh, we can actually, you want to do that? Sure. We can just give Jason a chance to talk to himself for himself right now. How about we do this over here? This is a game that J Jamie actually created and it was a lot of fun. And I, Jamie can tell you all about her game. We did, a, we did a little YouTuber trivia, you know, know your creator. It was an icebreaker for the event. Um, I'm a big fan of being interactive with the people in the room. I don't like to just talk to people. I want people to ask questions. I want people to, to feel. I want people to learn. I want people to tell me if they can't hear or they don't understand what I'm talking about. If I'm talking way over their heads, that type of thing. 
Um, and I also want people to know that, that, that it's meant to be include them. So whenever we talked about this event, I told Lester, I have a really, you know, a fun idea that I think would be funny and inclusive. And I said, I want it to be about know your creator because everybody that was coming could have known or might not have known each presenter. And of course, these guys are, are the big guys. So I, I went ahead and introduce everybody, introduce them all. Okay. We have Jason from Coghill Farms. We have this hunk right here. We have Daniel from our family homestead. And we have Sean from Keeping It Dutch. Right? Keeping uh -huh. It Dutch? Keeping It Dutch. Okay. Now, he actually go. his name is Sean, but he actually goes by Dutch. Yes. And there were some folks who were, who, who they, they know the arms family. They know Daniel. They know of Jason at Cog Hill. They know that family. But we haven't talked a whole lot about Dutch. In fact, I've only, that was my first time meeting yeah. Dutch. And uh, we follow his page for a while. Dutch doesn't really deal with a whole lot of animals as much as he does like carpentry. He's a lot of the off grid, off the grid, yeah. home building. He drives he a skid steer. He does skills. His wife Brandy coordinated the whole event. Like it was, it was really neat and had people from all different walks of life and then all different creators who followed different pages as well. So I asked. I asked all the wives and the creators for some some things about them in their videos that were not like well well known but were about them that maybe people would know so for instance <clears throat> one of them was so everybody everybody and everybody in the audience had these two things in their hands that they were ready for the game they yeah, were ready Lester for the game. and i had blisters on our hands from cutting all these things and stapled and glue in the night before we had total craft hour yeah um so one of the first questions that I asked was, I think it was, um, who, what, or which uh, how about the bunker? Oh yeah. Which, which creator, uh, got their, their big, their big video by installing a bunker. So maybe you guys might know, let's play and see how well, okay. you know, these four video creators. So which of these four creators got their start in social media by building and an underground bunker, storm shelter type bunker. Anyone think they might know the answer to that? So I'm watching. I see over some here. answers. Over Look here. at this, That's Amy. Impressive. Amy, well, up. Uh, it went to Amy. I'm so sorry. You were the first, but it went by so darn fast. But I, I can't pull it up now, Amy. I'm so sorry. A lady named Amy said it first, but it, yes, it was in fact dutch mm -hmm. uh dutch was uh, like i said he's kind of the off-grid type guy um and he bought and had installed a, a storm shelter slash bunker that was going to be his what do they call that bug out place yeah and just in case everything all goes haywire and his video about that got millions of views yeah and that is that is what you know got him into really video creation and kind of made his channel big um, and the next one I got, uh, or next one I asked was, uh, which creator retired from the police force? Which creator retired from the police force? Did anyone know that one? And of course, everyone was thinking about it. So of course, the people that know these creators who had been watching those channels for a long time were real fast to say it. And what they say? So what's funny is you would look out into the audience and everybody's holding up their sign like they're in some auction or whatever yeah. and holding up these faces, waving them around. It was really neat. And oh, one of one of the questions was which creator is known to cry on camera? Which creator is known to cry on camera? <clears throat> now, I will say that I had no part in creating any of these questions. And uh, it was a little bit embarrassing, Jamie, to be honest. I'm sitting there in front of uh, grown men, lots of grown men. And uh, I had to let them know that I have a, um, you remember the water boy, the medulla oblongata. <laughs> and I don't have one of those. What? <laughs> I was not born with a very large, I have a very tiny medulla oblongata, which I guess is some kind of a thing. But, um, so then there was a creator that said, one of the creator questions was, which creator's pig picked the Super Bowl winner two oh, years yeah. in a row? Oh, yeah. This is a funny one. 
Winch Creators Pig has picked the Super Bowl winner two years in a row. No one's going to know that one. No one is going to know. I'm that. watching here. No one's going to know that one. Wait a minute. A lot of people are. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. Jamie? Could this be? Now, do we have any volume on this? Jason? Oh, do, now. Do you see what I see? Now, hold on. Now. We can't hear Jason. Yeah. Um, on here. We cannot hear Jason. Jason, yeah, we mean, cannot hear you. Can you click I can hear you guys. It's, it's mute. Click on here. Jason, give us a second over here. Edit my script. Well, he should be able to hear. From Jason, him. can you hear us? Thumbs up. Jason can hear us fine. But we're not able to hear Jason. Hold on. I'm pulling it up. And see. we're going to pull it up on the phone to see what's going on. Give us one second, Jason. We are, we're not as techy as No, we're not very good. Wait, wait, they can hear him, but we can't. They can hear both of you. Oh, boy, that's going to be something. Okay, then that has to be something with my phone, Jamie, or with my computer. That's going to be delayed. Boy, we are in quite the fix. So, everybody, listen up. This over here is our good friend, Jason Smith, from Cog Hill Farm. And we are not able to hear Jason, and okay. it's probably all my fault. So, Jason, you're going to be silent to us, but you have the rest of our audience at <laughs> your disposal. So, would you please <laughs> just say something to everybody? Hey, everybody, and you can say whatever you That's want. Right. I don't know how we're going to be able to fix this, but I'm going to give you the floor, Jason. So, go with it. And Jamie's going to try to figure it all out. I can't see any comments or anything, so all I can see is you guys, but um. Yeah, how are y'all doing? How, how is uh everybody doing? Whew, I'm worn out, though, I'm going to tell you. I'm absolutely worn out. <laughs> I can hear myself. <laughs> it's got to be on the phone, though. There's nothing on your settings. So this is very strange because my phone is delayed. And so I can hear it like two seconds. So Jason's already done talking and, and staring, trying to figure it out as well. So, okay, we're going to have to practice this more next time. Uh, then we just lost Jason. Maybe he's going to rejoin one of those two things. But either way, that was just a, we wanted to say that we met Jason. Lester met Jason. I met Jason as well. I didn't get to meet Brooke. It was, it was incredible. We could, oh, we could have put, we could have called him and put him on the phone. I, I don't know. I, and then we lost them. So it might be, and, but I'm glad everyone else could hear Jason. Guys, we're sorry about that, man. We'll do better next time. Uh, oh, wait, he's back. Let's he's calling again. He's, gonna, he's calling back. Let's see if it'll work this time. Add to stream. Can y'all hear me and now? I still can't hear him. <laughs> What's wrong with us? I don't know, Jamie. <laughs> but my mic is not on mute. My speakers are on. Mine's not on mute. And there's nothing. And Jason. when I go to guess, it doesn't even tell me like anything. Okay. Well, Jason, we are very sorry. But uh, for everyone that can hear me, if you can hear me, let me just say that I had the distinct pleasure of hanging out with this guy for almost two full days. Yeah. We uh, talked. We laughed. We danced. Oh, we we joked. We had a couple of adult beverages. I hope that that's okay with everybody. And uh, Jason, it was a pleasure meeting you and hanging out with you. And uh, I want you, if you will, Jason, I can't hear a word you're going to say. So you can say whatever you want to about me and I'll never know. But I would like you to talk about your page just for a second. Okay. And if there's anybody on our page who doesn't know who you and your family are, just introduce you and your family sure. and what you guys do and uh, just let them know a little bit about your page and what you guys do, where you're at. Just give them the whole rundown. We'll do it. We'll do it. Of course, we are Cock Hill Farm. We're in central Alabama. Uh, we just recently moved to this farm. Uh, we got a bigger farm now. We started on seven and a half acres, but now we're on 40. And yeah, it's me, my lovely wife, my daughter, Mary Carl, who most everybody knows is the bird expert. And we have an array of farm animals that are pets, similar to this awesome man over here. And um, that's pretty much us right there. 
You still can't figure it out. Are you done, Jason? Are you I'm done? done? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Listen, I'm sitting here watching your mouth move, so I am I am so very sorry. You can hear him. He said he's worn out. No worn more hanging out. out with Lester. Okay. I I, uh, I hate to hear that because we had a great time, Jason, and you know you did. And awesome you can time. always tell when you're having a great time with, with friends. And, guys, I will say this. I have not laughed as much as I was able to laugh. And... I know that I've heard Daniel say this a few times because Daniel collaborates quite a bit. We don't collaborate as much as we should. Jason and Daniel and I, we group text, and that's about all we ever get a chance to do because we stay very busy. But uh, there's something special about hanging out with folks, collaborating, if you will, with folks who have very similar interests, uh, very similar morals and, and, and lifestyles. And uh, Jason is as genuine as they come. I said this last night, and it almost made him cry. It did almost. Oh, I wanted to get a tear out of him. <laughs> Hold on. Oh. Was this before or after you tried to throw him in the fountain? No, this would have this been before. before. Oh, okay. The fountain came much oh, later. Okay. The fountain came after a few too many of those. <laughs> but that was fun. We created some wonderful memories. Yes. And Jason, I am so sorry that we're going to have to figure this out because I want to get the dialogue and have – you back at some point when yeah. we can actually hear you it's a i just googled it it's a chrome update that we needed to do or need to do yeah i don't update out. my things i don't update i don't update jason is there anything else you want to share before we say goodbye to you uh just that i had a wonderful time with everybody my first time meeting you and jamie was just beyond my expectations you guys okay, i'm reading his, his lips yeah. And what he's saying is Lester is probably the most amazing yes. guy <laughs> you could ever see on the internet. If you Got are it. ever bored of a video yes. or you need an idea, go to Lester's channel. I see it. Longhorn Lester's or I'm a survivor. That's something like that. I actually something. think that yeah. he said that he, he validated that Daniel was saying that I was the brains of the operation. Oh, that's probably true. And yeah. that Lester plays a really big part, but, mm, you know, that I think I saw that's him true. go, mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, Jason is also known as the dancing farmer. For, so for all of you folks that enjoy a lot of dancing along with just loves life and he loves his family and he loves every bit of farming from the from the things that grow to the living souls. And they have a lot of babies out there. They all have names and personalities. And if you need another page to watch, if you like that kind of stuff, go visit Jason at Cog Hill Farm and, and say hello. And Mary Carl, who we did we not get to don't meet. don't want to leave them I out. can't wait to. And maybe one day we'll get to meet that famous Super Bowl pig as well. <laughs> yes, yes. And I can come get some gardening tips. That's that's on my, my bucket list. Yes, yeah. and then I'll say one last thing. For the people who keep saying y'all need to have a dance-off, guys, I've already – admitted that there's no shame here that jason is a much better dancer than i am now of course i only have one leg that works so i i do have my excuse i do have an excuse i only have one leg i'm a little bit handicapped <laughs> more fancy, but i can i can wobble it Jay, they said that jason needs to finish his thought let him finish oh jason's still talking go no i'm i'm through talking i you must be delayed <laughs> yeah, i think he's still talking about my channel he's still yeah. talking, he's still building me up i think <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I think yeah. he's still talking about me. Oh my God! Look at his hat. Look at Jason's hat. Oh, wow! Snap. That says Longhorn Lester's. <laughs> it's not that, right? No, it's not that. All right, Jason. Well, let's say pleasure, brother. We love you very much. You're a great man. We you had too, a lot of fun with you. We really did. It so was much neat fun. meeting you. I feel time. bad for Jamie because I kind of felt like once I saw you, from that point on, it was it was no more of Jamie and I. I think that Lester must have slept outside your door last night. <laughs> he just wasn't ready to part ways. Oh, he man. Oh, it was awesome. And it really was. About that. You guys are amazing. You do. <laughs> All right, Jason. We will talk to you soon, brother. Take care. Right. And thank you for coming on and saying hi. Sorry I couldn't hear any of that. But uh, yeah, at least I know what I think you said. That's yeah, all that right. counts anyway. It's close. That's all was in here. It's close right, enough. Bye, brother. Thank Bye, you. Buddy. Now, how do we get rid of him? How do we kick him <laughs> off? Is he going to take over our page now? Yeah. He's just going to take over our whole life. We're going to sit here and watch Jason, I guess. And, and everyone's fine. And everybody say, don't leave. Just stick around. And you know, that's great. So how do we How do we boot this guy? How do we boot him? Boot him, Jamie. Boot him. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it.
Oh, he checked out on his own. Uh, anyway, okay, that was fun. I sure wish we could have heard what he said. I'm sure we will later. So someone may have to uh, give us the cliff notes of that. Better have been good stuff because, uh, oh, he said that you're both amazing. All right, thank you very much. And yes, we will. We'll, we will rewatch our video. We will. It really was a great time for me meeting um, just new people who I, they live in our space. And, and I don't mean like here in our you know kitchen i mean like most most of them had either homestead farm gardening you know just i i call it simple life even though it's not so simple but it's not big city people tech people it was people who do what we do and you know wanted to learn more about how to take what they do and show the rest of the world and for me it was, it was just it was I think more inspiring to me to be in front of these people and to just have one-on-one -on -one time with them and to get to know them and where they are and their hopes, their dreams, their, you know, their, their trials and the things that, that they have overcome in their lives was just, it was empowering for me. It was, it was an incredible blessing to be there. One thing, and I don't really think that we can ever give away too much information because, um, all of us, y'all, we, we, we are all blessed. One thing that all four of us creators uh, of the men, along with Jamie and DJ. and DJ, so the six of us who presented yesterday, um, we're all very blessed to have found a window of opportunity into social media. We've all became a part of a large social media family, which is you all. We have people to lean on and to share things with. We go about it in different ways. We all go about it in different ways. And uh, the, like I said, my version, my presentation was about, you know, kind of how to tell a story to entertain your audience. Jamie talked about the differences in the platforms and things that you have to know. Jason talked a whole lot about knowing your audience. And I learned a lot from Jason, things that even though I've known Jason for probably two years now, uh, and we've chit chatted back and forth a number of times, Jason taught me some things yesterday that I've been doing this for four years, but I never realized that I've never taken time to know my audience. And once you know your audience, you can sort of, and you need to sort of gear your page towards your audience. I hope that's not Jason texting me. Telling me we're still on his camera and can't get out. That actually is Jason. I think. But, oh, he's actually telling us what the issue was. Did you ever click that yeah, button? Yeah, I clicked it. We, we clicked that one, Jason. But uh, anyway, no, Jason was talking a whole lot about once he learned his audience, he began to make sure his uh, videos were geared towards his audience. And at that point, his pages took off and he's had several large, you know, very large videos, but the by and large, Jason is a, is a guy that just goes out there and he loves on his babies and he loves his family. And there's a lot of neat things that you guys can get from him. If you ever need a page to follow, then we, by all means say, spend some time with Jason at Cog Hill. And I don't think you'll be let down. You will never be let down. And, um, uh, so that's pretty much the gist of it. Jamie, what are you playing on your phone for? Are you trying to ban somebody? Yeah. Oh, someone's being mean. I cannot believe on such a great positive Thanks. day. Hey, Jamie, I got something for you. I want to share something. So I had a gift come over the weekend that I was not here to open. But uh, when I got home, and as, as tired as we all are, I, I read through some of this. And a very sweet lady... Um, now, I'm not going to give all the details, but her name is Jane. She sent me some jokes that she wanted me to tell, some one-liners, some little one-liner jokes. And I'm going to read two of them to you. I'll, t I'll tell you three jokes. This is, these are cute. Y'all ready for this? Now, listen, she sent me an entire book full of jokes. Why do you think that on Noah's Ark, they didn't play cards? It's because Noah was standing on the deck. 
don't roll your eyes. That's a cute little joke. Okay, here's another one about Noah's Ark. How come on Noah's Ark they didn't go fishing? How come there was no fishing off of Noah's Ark? They only had two worms. They only had two worms. Okay, I will stop with the jokes. Wow. <laughs> That's hilarious. You get about the twos, right? I get it. And okay. I, so here's where I was going with that one. The first one, the cars, I was thinking about, it's got to be something about pears. It's got to be something about they pears. They only had two worms. You no. can't, you, yeah, you can't fish if you only have two worms, Jamie. Uh, there's another one that she told that was kind of cute, and, it's, and it kind of makes me think about longhorn lusters. You all know that we have uh, a little bit of a something going on at Longhorn Lester's that might very well include some indigenous Native American spirits. And so that's why I think this joke is kind of funny. A fella goes by the, uh, the blood bank and he sees uh, one of the local Native Americans in there giving blood. And he goes in behind him, wait his turn. And he goes, hey, aren't you full blood Cherokee? The guy goes, I used to be, but I'm a pint low now. <laughs> hey, aren't you full blood Cherokee? And the Indian, the Native American says, I used to be, but I'm a pint low now. Never mind. Okay, never mind. Did we see Annie attack Pearl? Annie How Pearl. did Annie attack Pearl? I'm so Pearl? confused by that too. So I'm guessing that somebody, I'm guessing this has to be a Jake or a Brienne video. And so we have not watched any videos. We've been too Wait, busy. Wait, who's Pearl? Because Annie. Pearl's not here. Pearl is over at Longhorn Lester's. That's what I'm saying. Is there a second Annie? Pearl? That's why I'm saying. Annie and Punk. So who's Punk? Oh, that's got to be Bree's puppy. Well, if Bree took her dog into Annie's yard, then that's that was no a good. foolish mistake. Bree no should good. have known. I did not see that, but uh, that was a foolish mistake because yeah. Annie doesn't know Punk. That's the dog, right? I think so. Yeah. And so that would have been very foolish uh, on Bree's part. You have to take care of your animals. But I will say this: uh, Annie probably only tried to scare her, so Annie would do that thing that alpacas are known for, and that would be a very rapid paw, 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 paw to the ground. She generally doesn't truly attack. She will get right in front of, and then the pup, the dog, which almost every one of our dogs has been in this position where it just cowers. And then, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it, it, Annie will do that in her space or if she is overseeing like the littles out and about and she feels threatened, but. Well, Annie also is letting any dog or any other species know this this is this is our yeah. territory and i protect this so you're not welcome here and so punk will learn that lesson yeah that i would say punk. like and he probably climbed through the fence that's happened it's that it's took he used to do it too and she had to learn her lesson they've but all I will learned say their lesson annie has never truly hurt any of our dogs she knows that she's trying to scare him or her and I just don't, I, I think that it is a scare tactic more than the true attack. Um, so I think it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. Uh, Brie but, made uh, a video about it and not called us to tell us something if something really happened, you know, yeah. really bad happened. So I, I'm confident that everything was fine. Well, Annie is within her rights to defend her pastures yeah. and we would never get on to Annie for doing that. So what has to happen is Punk has to learn that there's fences that you don't crawl under and you don't crawl through. And, uh, and, and Punk will learn that it only takes once. I think the most beautiful story we have, and there's a video of this uh, with Annie and a dog. We used to have a little white boxer. Um, and Hannah. Hannah. Yeah. We had a little white boxer and her name was Hannah. And she was uh, deaf. She was born deaf. You know, a lot of times... When a puppy is born, uh, not albino, they don't call it albino, it's just white. A lot of times white puppies, for some reason, in some um, breeds of dogs, and or they can be born blind or deaf. And Hannah was born deaf. We found out real fast that she wasn't going to be able to stay here. We were going to raise her and keep her as one of ours, but farm life was just way too dangerous for a dog that couldn't hear. The from tractors. tractors, the UPS driver, the Amazon guys, the kids in the four wheelers yeah, zooming just... by. But uh, one time early on, and Hannah was just a puppy, 
And I'd gone inside the pastures to put a roll of hay and Hannah followed me. And I'm sitting there on the tractor and I'm lowering the roll of hay. And there's Hannah sitting there waiting for me and she's following me. And I see Annie and Annie sees Hannah and Annie comes running. Annie at some point began to realize that this little puppy doesn't know that she's even there. So Annie stopped and she does her little spit thing. And still Hannah is sitting there looking at me on the tractor just with little, little puppy love eyes, has no idea Annie's behind her. So Annie could have literally sit there and smashed her into the ground, but she didn't. It's the most beautiful video ever. Annie took her paws and did this. And I'm sorry I'm shaking the table, but she did this behind Hannah. Hannah finally could feel the ground vibrating. So Hannah turns around, her eyes get big, she freaks out and takes off running. And Annie like gallops behind her all the way down the fence to make her go out until she left and crawled back under. And Annie's back to eating and whatever Annie's she was an doing. an incredible animal. Like an incredible. And, and alpacas are, are amazing and they are protectors naturally. But Annie is like, to me, next level. Like she is, there's something so special and unique about Annie. Um, and, and we have a few animals like that. I've talked about that before. But I think that Annie is amazing. Abigail says, I remember that video of Annie stomping on the ground to get Hannah's attention. It was a very powerful it was video. Incredibly powerful. Uh, I believe that was one that we let the Dodo have. And yeah. they used that when, when the Dodo did their compilation of Annie. I believe that they put that one in there. And uh, so a lot of people saw that video. And it was just a really, really neat moment. And that was an eye opener for us. She saw what she thought might be a threat, a dog in her pasture with her babies. Uh, the goats and uh, she came over there to teach that dog a lesson the dog had no idea because she's you know unable to hear and annie was able to get her out jamie's going crazy here beside me i don't know what's going on in all the comments it's i'm all just handled. It's all handled i'm just guessing there's a lot of drama i think if y'all would just stop reading all that mess and stop arguing with each other maybe just know that uh the focus is here my friends the focus is over here so I do want to say thank you to Jacob and Brienne because we got back to the farm today. We came to I'm a Survivor first and everything was in tip top shape and order. The waters were clean. Everything had been done. Um, it made me feel a little bit like, wow, what do they need us for? What do they need us for? Because the animals were content and everything was good. So I appreciate Jake and Brianne spending time here at I'm a Survivor the, over the past several days, taking care of our babies. And I say our babies, yours and ours, we share these guys. And uh, now Jamie and I are gonna get off here and we're gonna leave and go straight up to Longhorn Lester's and see how L.E. and Ben did with the uh, the little bit harder and the little bit, a little bit less, the less manageable crew you all know that carl and his family along with tex and the bigs and beverly that little donkey pony oh my god they can be rough and if that's not She's bad ornery. enough beverly is ornery i will say beverly that. is ornery and if, they're not, if that's not bad enough then you got all them darn goats and them goats can be ornery too uh, you got tilly who lives in the shop who thinks she's a dog and she will come back and she'll pop you in the kneecap as fast as she can so we will say that as much as we appreciate Jake and Brianne for hanging out here and keeping an eye on I'm a Survivor, don't forget about L.E. and Ben who took their weekends and spent at Longhorn Lester's, and they had quite the go about as well. Uh, L.E. did message me both days to let me know that all was fine. They were, they were <laughs> no injuries reported. Everyone's good. We, so, we definitely checked in on cameras all the time and just felt just very much peace of mind that we didn't even have to message to say, how are things going? That each one of them pre preemptively sent us stuff saying, here's a picture, everything's well. I mean, don't get me wrong. We, we were still looking at the cameras nonstop. But it gave us just, they were all very responsible and very, like I said, proactive and and wanted us to feel comfort that they had things handled and that gave us a really nice peace of mind. Yeah. Um, so Ben did not sleep with the animals in the shop. Guys, we haven't done a whole lot on this, but we have a little bit of a conversion going on as we speak. 
uh, we're taking our time with this, but we're slowly converting the other end. We're finishing up a project that Mr. Dub and Ms. Sharon started uh, before they moved out of the property. And we're slowly converting a, um, a little small apartment, if you will. I can call it an apartment. I guess that's what you would call it. What would you call a small livable like space? It's like a studio. Like a yeah, studio, we'll just you call know. it a studio. And so it, it has air conditioning and we are working on some small things, fixtures and a little, some doors and small things. And we will bring that to y'all. We've been trying to find ways to bring it, but there's been so many other projects. And our goals in all of this was to get the projects done first. We had to take care of the animals. And as you know, we're, we, we work on a budget. Uh, the way we do Longhorn Lester's is we save, we, we, you know, we work all month by making the videos, we save our money and we use that to do whatever projects need to be done. And so our goal, our, our number one goal was to get the pastures built, get the pond dug. Uh, what else have we done over there? The barn for the, for the cows. Fencing. Along with Lots the, the cross shelters. fencing, the shelters. We've done a lot. And so now we're kind of turning our attentions now to trying to finish up the little livable space. And so Ben did not have to sleep with the animals. <laughs> he wouldn't have done that. Ben would have probably drawn the line at that and it's too hot to camp out. So I doubt Ben would have done that, but yes, there'll be a whole lot more to come on that when we're ready to bring it to you. But uh, no, Ben did the overnights and Ellie went up and did all the chores. Um, I think on Ellie's page, I believe he will probably bring you videos of the chores being done. I, he may have already posted those. I have no idea. I've had no time to figure out um, what's, hold on, someone talking about the geese. Oh boy. I saw the geese. Are you going to take any geese to Longhorn Lester? That's what it's, right when you see it where? Right All right, so let's have a little discussion about this. Let's have a fun discussion. Hey, Jamie, I like that bunkhouse. Okay. We could call it the bunkhouse. Yeah. Hey, listen, are you going to take any geese to Longhorn Lusters? Now, listen, it's okay to disagree with each other. We already have learned, guys. We've learned that it's, it's completely okay. We can agree that in life we're going to sometimes disagree. And it doesn't change anything about how we feel about each other. We just don't agree. And there's things that Jamie and I don't agree with. And there's things that you and I don't agree with. But we still love you, and I hope that you still love us, and we still love each other. But uh, I prefer, my if my preference would be not to have any feathered babies at Longhorn Lester's. Now, of course, right now, there's not a place for them anyway. The pond does not hold enough water. The little bit of water in the pond, they would pollute and make it to where our cows and horses couldn't sip or drink from it. It has to be filtered or at least aerated. And uh, we don't have that set up yet. The river would be too dangerous. They would not last on that river. No, the river is not a place for any feathered fowl like we have. It. Not, not like pets. And then I guess the last thing is, and this is the biggest one over here, guys. The biggest one over here is this, the noise. And some folks don't consider it to be noise. They find it lovely to hear the sounds of your roosters crowing and your hens squawking and your geese straight out screaming at you and all of the noises that the ducks can make. And some people just love that. And that's harmonious to your ears. And it sounds like a real farm. But personally, when I go to Longhorn Lester's, I don't hear any of that. There are sometimes a neighbor has a rooster we can hear crowing, but that's far off in the distance. So I can barely hear it coming through the trees, through the woods. And we don't have to deal with all of that noise. I'm sorry. I call it noise. And so I love that. I love the peace and quiet. And so if you if you've noticed something, Jamie, and this is true, how many times have you read that people say, Lester, you're so much more at peace and calm? My demeanor when I'm at Longhorn Lester's, the videos of me at Longhorn Lester's are an entire different tone mm -hmm. of of level of whatever you want to call it anxiety or emotions or whatever 
because it is truly a place of peace and quiet. And I think that the feathered babies would make it loud. They, they would make it loud. I'm a survivor is very loud. Uh, Arms Family Homestead is very loud. Cog Hill Farm is very loud. It's the feathered babies. It's not the other animals. It's the feathered babies make it so loud. And I would just rather not. Now, of course, we know there's going to be reasons why it would be beneficial to eventually have some chickens and some ducks and some geese. But um, I just would rather not. And if you're going to say, go ahead and talk. So what's, your, what's your opinion on this? And tell me, just justify it. So I, I see both sides. Don't get me wrong. I do agree that the silence out there is calming. But I also see that this is a much more condensed space that we're in here. So it does feel loud. You, you have a lot. You have metal buildings that are 50 feet with more metal buildings. So the sound here that happens is loud. And roosters are loud and the geese can be loud but if you sit in the front yard right now you don't hear them out at the pond you no. don't hear them out at the pond and we feed them 30 feet from our porch so you do hear them a lot more so but, jamie you're forgetting one thing whenever i walk outside the geese come to me like to me like after me and so how am i supposed to ever walk out to longhorn lester's and make my walk to all the different pastures without having to stop midway and fight off geese. And should, how can that be peaceful for anybody? But here's the thing. So do you care about my, my, do you care? What part of this, when do you say that I care about you, Lester, and your well-being enough to leave the geese here at I'm a survivor? I didn't say I was training them. <laughs> I just said I see both sides and you asked me to talk. Okay, okay. So I, I think that first, if we were to get, if we were to take chickens over there after we've built a coop, and I mean, all of that is, future right then i th also think that chickens aren't as loud as roosters so we don't necessarily have to have a rooster so that would be step one and as far as the geese my fears are like yes i still feel like we have too many geese here for our size but we never intended to have more than the five that we have and you know folks sent those which they're a blessing they're a blessing um but i would fear actually splitting them up now because i, I know who hangs with who and whatnot but like they're they are a flock like a together flock they don't one might separate out like we have one right now where the ice queen is laying eggs in fact she left us a surprise on the driveway um but she still is part of our flock and when she's outside they're all kind of like the rest are still together and then she'll be welcome back in but my fears are is like what if i picked the wrong like what if i picked the wrong crowd you know like to split up and that type of thing and that's something and I would also be terrified because we do have predators out there that would affect feathered babies. So I just, I don't necessarily think that it's the best place for them. And it's not just because you need it quiet. It is because I really do believe that their best life is here. So I don't, if something would happen here, then yes, of course. But for the most part, I just think that, I think that we're okay where we're at. So some people have jokes. So there are some folks that think this is the funniest thing ever. And uh, as you guys who watch my dad's channel know, well, you know that I can't stand guineas and uh, most people can't. But uh, for some reason, my dad loves them. And with as many problems that we've had with guineas around here, uh, my dad's about to hatch off 40 something more. And uh, I think it's funny that some of y'all are saying, hey, unplug papa's incubator while you still can just go over there and unplug that incubator i'm not going to do that and sabotage my dad's guineas um it's just what my dad loves it's what my dad does i'm sure there's probably habits that i have that my dad have had to put up with through the years i will say that the guineas are not going to be as big of a problem now because friends when we pulled up our driveway today I don't know how it happened, but miraculously over the two or three days that we were gone, all of that pond is surrounded by the most beautiful green grass. It's like a giant chia pet and it's beautiful. Yes. And I made a video that I'll stick on here. I think I'm going to play it for you tomorrow because I want you to see it right away. I don't want you to wait. I've already built it. I've already uploaded it. 
So now I'm going to schedule it for y'all to watch tomorrow morning. Uh, or if not tomorrow, it'll be very soon. But uh, I tell you what, it is, it's looking good. And at this point, the guineas can't really hurt us. They can still come in the yard and dig holes. But if you don't know this, I was gifted a salt gun. It's a, it's a pump shotgun that shoots salt, salt. It shoots salt, like salt, kitchen salt. And so it's not harmful to anybody. Jamie's saying, hold on, hold on. I don't know what she wants me to hold on for. Just keep going. I got to do something real quick. But uh, Jamie has, uh, thinks it's the funniest thing. But no, I've been able to walk out with my salt gun where you can't hurt anybody. And I can just shoot salt. Because, can you all see some of this? I'm watching the camera the other day and I'm like, this is weird. Look at He's like strolling by the camera with a camera and a gun, like like a terrorist of some right sort. There. Back it up and pause it. And so I actually, because, hey, I'm a video maker. So what I was doing <laughs> on that particular day was showing you all the new salt gun that I have. It's not a BB gun, so it's not going to hurt anybody. It doesn't shoot rocks, uh, rock salt. It just shoots fine, tiny like, like regular table grains salt. of salt. I, uh, to test it out, I let Jamie shoot me in the arm yeah. and, uh, I felt the salt. I just mostly felt the air and a couple of little grains of salt. It can also shoot fine sand. But, yeah. But uh, like one grain at a time, it's not like it pumps it out like that. Like it is the most finite little thing and it uses air to push one grain. Is it grain? No, it, it has granule more, of salt. It has more than one granule at a oh. time. Well, it's still, people are like, it's going to kill your grass. It's not like that. It's like, oh, I don't think so. It's like granule. Like it doesn't, it holds a fourth of a teaspoon, the entire gun. Yeah. And so I don't know if y'all know this or not, but does anyone know, or do you know why they actually, the, when I opened the salt gun and I was reading about it, that they don't make it to shoot guineas. No, you can, but they make it for another household you know what i'm talking about yeah for what i read the box before i threw it away it's made to get flies yeah. instead of taking your fly swatter and going around popping flies instead you can have a little fun and ch -ch -ch, bam i did it on a conference call the other day while you, you shot it. a fly did it work did it kill it and so you're able to kill fly yeah everyone's saying that they kill flies with those things they kill flies not cats you don't shoot your cats, okay? You shoot flies. And so they're made to shoot flies. And that right there tells you alone it's not going to affect the guineas at all. But it will put the fear of God in them whenever I cock it and get my phone out. Because they don't want to be on videos looking like a bunch of fools. And then I also have to have a little fun by, say hello to my little friend. I didn't do any of that. I was like on a call and I'm all, I'm listening and very intently. And there's a fly that was like crawling across the top of my laptop. So low key, I'm over here cocking and I'm like shooting off camera, hoping that no one sees me because it was like a three hour conference call that I was listening to. And I did it and I was proud all without anyone knowing. Really? What does over here say? It works too. My sister had one and we all had a good time with it on the 4th of July shooting flies. <laughs> That actually could be a really fun be a challenge. Great challenge. Because every once in a while, we have a cat, Mr. Hank. You all know Mr. Hank, our, our, our cat here at the house, who can go to the sliding glass door and he can manipulate that door and open it to go in and out. And so sometimes we'll come home from being gone for a few hours and our door is cracked open so far because Hank has either come in or out. Now Maggie can do it as well. Now Maggie can do of it. Of course Trixie can. Trixie is like the ninja of all ninjas. Rissy will not do it, but she will take advantage of it after everyone else has well, done that. But hold on. The good thing is when Maggie opens the door, Maggie will also close it behind her. She also puts the seat down to the toilet when she's done. Um, but it's Hank, Mr. Hank, that opens the door and leaves it open. When oh. sometimes invites Pablo to come in and everyone else who can squeeze through. Oh, and so on those days, it's we, Hank's fault. on those days, we do have fly issues. So, uh, that I cannot wait to shoot my first fly. Uh, right now, I'll I don't record see it any. in slow mo for you. Yeah, we'll have to do that. We'll have to do that. <laughs> 
But uh, guys, we're going to go ahead and get off of here. We've held you for an hour. We it was great seeing Jason. Sorry we couldn't figure out the audio. We're, we're going to play with that a little bit more. And uh, Jason is really a very techie kind of guy. Yeah, he and probably he, has it already figured out. He will figure it out and then we'll communicate. And so next time we can do that because I would love to be able to share our friends and make them become your friends. And uh, there's, I, I would never encourage you to go out and become friends with people who I didn't think were good people. And I feel like I made that mistake uh, a while back, about a year ago, I began to encourage you guys to follow certain folks who I found out later were probably didn't really have your best interest at heart. And I kicked myself in the behind for that over and over and over. Um, and I'm not going to mention any names, so don't worry about that. But I do feel like Jason and at Cod Hill and Daniel over there at Arms Family, along with DJ and Brooke and Mary Carl and the whole Arms Family and the, the, the Smith family are just really good people. Just good people who I wish we lived closer because we probably would spend a lot of time at each other's homes. And, uh, and it's rare that you find good people like that, but it was kind of a destiny, you might say, or fate, a common interest in social media that brought us all together. We, uh, I'll tell you one funny story before we actually say our goodbyes. Do you remember how Jason and I became acquainted? Mm -hmm. You do? Mm -hmm. You remember this story? Mm -hmm. So this is funny, but, uh, we had just gotten Carl and there's a lot of you guys that already had followed Jason at Cog Hill. We, we didn't, we knew about the channel. Uh, I'd seen a few of his videos, but at that point we were producing videos, not watching other videos. So we didn't really watch a lot. We, we, you know, heard of Jason. We'd seen a few videos, Mary Carl, and everyone knows that on that channel, Mary Carl, who I believe is 12. Somebody just said it. Keep talking. I believe that Mary Carl is about 12, I think. But Mary Carl is their chicken expert. Mary Carl is a young lady. <laughs> Mary Carl is a young lady who has a passion for feathered babies. An incredible passion. And she's just so knowledgeable. And so even though Jason and Brooke, they spend their time with their chickens, Mary Carl spends her days with them chickens. And um, we had gotten Carl and we were so curious about what to do with this or what to do with that or what to do about this. We weren't real sure what we were doing with that rescue Carl, that, that eight was, foot that rescue was an bird. Statement. Let's be real here. Yeah, we weren't real sure what to do with, with, with Carl because we're just trying to learn our way. And man, our, our comments were just, we were being bombarded with these comments of you have to reach out to Mary Carl, Mary Carl can tell you what to do. And so I wasn't going to reach out and ask a 12 year old little girl to help me with an eight foot ostrich, <laughs> but uh, because I'd seen enough videos to know that Mary Carl handles pigeons, Mary Carl does chickens, Mary Carl does geese. And um, so as a joke, as a, as a typical Lester joke video, I made a video where I said, oh, so I reached out to Mary Carl and uh, thank y'all. She gave me some advice we're going to try today. And now this is all just fake, fake stuff. I made all this stuff up. I didn't reach out to Mary Carl. I said, Mary Carl told me to take these animal crackers that Carl loves and feed Carl a couple of them and then put them in my pocket. Tortillas. Was it tortillas? Mm -hmm. Feed him some tortillas put them in my pocket and walk around the pasture. Let him know that I'm a good guy and he can follow me around and, and all will be well. And whenever I feel like I can just pull off a tortilla. So what I did was knowing what I was going to, knowing what was going to happen, I geared myself up. I put on my body armor and I went ahead and went out there to that pasture and I fed Carl a couple of tortillas. And then I begin, I put them in my pocket and I begin to walk around and Carl came at me. You guys know how Carl can get when he was in a bad mood. He did not want me in that pasture. He came at me a hissing. His wings are out. He hits me. He kicks me. I fall over. But it was all for your entertainment purposes. It was all for your entertainment because as I fall over, 
I have my phone in selfie mode. So I'm watching Carl beat the hell out of me from the backside. And as I'm falling over, I'm like, thanks a lot, Mary Carl. And that's when my face goes into the dirt. Poor Mary Carl. And the, and the truth is, Mary Carl had never said a word to me about, about, about Carl. Mary Carl, which is Mary Carl, had never, I'd never spoken to Mary Carl. Well, a lot of people thought that I was making fun of Mary Carl. And they went to tattletale on me. They went to Jason's page and began to link my video to Jason's page. <laughs> so Jason, who also had heard of us, didn't follow us, just knew we were another farm, you know, farm channel. He's like, uh, uh ain't no one gonna mess with my little girl. Ain't no one gonna mess with my little girl. Obviously, Jason watches the video and he finds out real fast that it was all made out of humor. Jason got the humor. And he understands that people on social media can sometimes look to start drama. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we do that sometimes. And so he got a great laugh out of it. He uh, reached out to Daniel, who, who we had as a mutual friend, and he asked Daniel for my phone number. And so he called me and we talked and, I, you know, and he says, hey, man, he goes, I know it's, that was hilarious. He goes, I laughed. Mary Carl laughed. He goes, we watched it multiple times. And so from that day on, we made each other's acquaintance and we've had a lot of fun. Um, we've actually really talked to Mary Carl. We've also actually really yeah. did ask Mary Carl for advice. Jamie had a broody chicken who I forgot that story. What was that broody chicken story that you had to ask Mary Carl for some advice about? What to do to make her not broody anymore? Because Goldie was sitting on like her third in round, a row. Of, lit, round of eggs she, in a row and she was just depleted. So Mary Carl actually, we FaceTimed her on a live, I think. And, um, and, and I had to ask her for advice and that was the most legit advice and it was, it was perfect. And she is, she's just a brilliant little girl. And I have, full-blown pigeon envy by the way i want pigeons that fly back to me i want to be able to walk around and love on my feather babies like that because i can only do it with a few and mary carl is the feather whisperer and she is a brilliant little girl a young lady now um and we were really honored to be able to meet jason and i can't wait to meet mary carl and brooke and to be able to laugh about the body armor that you wore and the fact that you tried to say that she gave you advice <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun making those videos anita um you know what we will do that it's four o'clock now we're gonna run outside and do our chores here uh and then we're gonna head over to longhorn lusters and i don't mean to take up your entire day so folks by all means if you're like had enough of us because we come live a lot We've come live a lot this over the past weekend trying to show y'all we want to share special moments of ours with you. It's kind of like when you go see a movie that you really enjoy, you want to go home and tell everybody about it. You read a good book, you want to tell everybody about it. You want them to, sh to watch. Look, look at this video. You want them to see things that made you laugh and smile and feel good. And so we felt pretty good. We've been really excited. It's been an exciting weekend for us. And we just want to share that with people that we care about. But uh, at the same time, have you ever had a friend trying to just force something on you and you have no interest? You don't find the humor. You don't you don't want to know the story. You want to watch it for yourself. And so we're not trying to be over posting and just overbearing. So by all means, if, but we will. We'll go to Longhorn Lester's and we'll try to stand as close to the little Wi-Fi connector as we can. Hopefully we can show see the babies welcoming us home maybe they'll do some running and dancing and if we get going we can do that before it gets dark yeah so uh so you might see us in a couple of hours i'd say around six o'clock or so you might see us around six that's what we'll set our goal for that'll be a great time to feed up and uh and if so we will certainly do that for those who want to come back and watch the longhorn lester babies but i will say this the animals here are great everybody when really we well. when we pulled up the pigs were not running and screaming animals will tell on you oh yes animals will tell on you they have a they have a consistent routine that they get very used to and so they will let you know when it's time to eat they'll let you know if something is not right and so when we pulled up today the horses where they were they're always at during the noon hour the ducks and the geese and we're doing their thing in the pond 
the pigs were all laying out in the cooling area and no one was screaming and hollering saying we're hungry we haven't been fed the water's dirty jake's been mean to us no one so we feel like everything went very smooth over here really good and when we pull up to Longhorn Lester's, we hope that the ostriches will be dancing, happy to see us, and the goats will do what they do, and we will, by all means, try to bring that to you all. Thank you all for loving us and supporting us and uh, just, just being there for us when we need you. Anything else you got to say, my love? I hope that you all have a really blessed afternoon. We'll talk to you this evening. Thanks for loving us. All right. Bye, guys.